Cooking has always been something Dee Levine loved to do. The New Orleans native started out when she was seven years old. One of my favorites is shrimp bisque. As a girl growing up in New Orleans, I love shrimp. That was one of my favorite things. Just pick a seat. Fast forward to now, Levine is a full-time chef and just opened a culinary school inside the Southern Food and Beverage Museum. The menu that we're gonna make today is going to be a tasso mock shoe. It's called Delightful Rue School of Cooking. You go ahead and put on your apron. This is a milestone. It's been 80 years since a black woman got first class photos owned a cooking school in New Orleans. This is probably one of the biggest things I've done in my career thus far. Get that. Um, and I'm excited about it because I never saw this vision. She's actually still cutting your um, tassel. Inspired by many in the culinary industry, Levine said one particular New Orleans chef pushed her to think and dream bigger. Someone who broke barriers and made history, yet is often left in the shadows. Chef Lena Richard. I am beyond impressed with what she's done in her career and the fact that she's laid the path for me over 80 years ago to be standing right here in my own cooking school. It's all thanks to her. Lena Richard was born in 1892 and grew up in a home on North Durbany Street. She started her culinary career when she was 14 years old, helping her mom and her aunt as a domestic worker for a prominent New Orleans family. She was part of this, you know, this dominant workforce that were domestic servants, and that was the only jobs that many African American women could get after um, the Civil War ended in slavery. Chef Richard quickly learned the ins and outs of cooking and grew into a culinary giant. In 1937, Chef Richard opened a cooking school to teach black people the necessary skills to get a better paying job in the Jim Crow South. In 1938, she opened a frozen food company, shipping meals to people's homes all over the world. Then in 1939, Chef Richard published her own cookbook with more than 300 recipes inside. It's called Lena Richard's Cookbook, and it's the first Creole cookbook written by an African-American. Her doing that and the fact that she was a phenomenal chef was a big deal. So not only did you get to kind of impress your family or friends or whoever you were cooking for, you got to do it on a grand scale. In 1941, Chef Richard opened her very first restaurant on LaSalle. It was called Lena's Eatery. Eight years later in 1949, she opened her second restaurant called Lena Richard's Gumbo House. That same year, Chef Richard made history again. She was the first black woman to host a cooking show and it aired right here on WDSU twice a week from October 1949 until she passed in November of 1950. No one uh, today that is African American uh, has reached her prominent status as far as owning a, two restaurants, uh, owning a culinary school, um, cookbooks, being on television, also food and retail. You know, when I think about Chef Lena Richard, the fact that she was the first African-American woman on live TV twice a week, not just, you know, some little 10 minute segment. She had an audience. I often wonder how it was forgotten and obviously so quickly. Right behind you. Levine often asks herself where she would be now if she knew about Chef Richard early on in life. Regardless of when she found out about it, she says it's important to share her story and she's working each and every day to carry on Chef Richard's legacy, honoring a culinary trailblazer. To do what she has done, I think her resilience is the number one thing that she should be remembered for. In New Orleans, Christina Watkins, WDSU News. Awesome story there. Join us every Wednesday night at 6 throughout Black History Month. We will share inspiring stories of hope and change right here on WDSU.